Road trip time for Cincinnati. It's the Bearcats and the St. Louis Billikens. I'm Preston Baker. I'll be carrying you along for the whole weekend here in St. Louis. And they're a weekend away from conference play. Yeah, two, two of them back to back to start off conference play. Went three and three in those two weekends. A pretty good start. And now with the uh, 13 team conference, you got to have that one week off from conference play. And this is your week off. Take a trip out to St. Louis. And a St. Louis team that was selected to be first in the A-10 in, in the preseason. They've played some really good baseball up to this point. They've had a lot of opportunities to win. And they've won a lot of ball games. They're coming to this ball game 15 and four. They were 15 and one. They're losers of their last three. So they're going to be hungry for a win here today, Will St. Louis. And a sunny day, not a... Not really in any cloud cover, a little bit of light clouds on the bottom. Not quite a Chamber of Commerce day, as you would say. Not not as clear as clear skies can get, but we are just down the uh, just down the way from the Gateway Arch and just about to get things ready to go here. And fun to finally be able to get on the road with this uh, this ball club. It's been a, it's been a team that's been fun to watch early in this season. Quick lineups for Cincinnati first. Uh, batting first, left fielder Josh Eggman. Batting second at first, Tommy O'Connor. Third at third base, Carrington Cross. Fourth behind the plate, Josh Cross. Fifth, the H today's Hunter Jesse. Sixth is Luke, Luke Sefcik, he's at second. Seventh is Landon Vitterick, he's in right. Eighth is Christian Mitchell, he's at short. And rounding it out is Dalton Pearson in center. Really kind of the same lineup as usual, just kind of bumped Dalton from one to nine there. They're gonna face off against right-handed Jackson Holmes. He's four and one on the season, 25 innings pitched. He's got a 6-1-2 ERA, 1.4 whip, so he's, you know, a little susceptible to giving up a few runs. Uh, 19 strikeouts and just six walks, so he's not going to walk you a bunch either. First pitch to Hegeman is called strike, and we are underway. Time of first pitch, exactly 4 o'clock here. Actually, exactly 3 o'clock here, central time. Both these computers are still set to eastern time, but, you know, the phone was automatic resetting. The computer's not so much, so the windup in the 0-1 from Holmes. Finds the upper half called strike two. No balls, two strikes to count real quick on Josh Hegman. Real bright day here. This field here in St. Louis. Infield is turfed. Mound is turfed. The outfield looks to be natural grass. Can't quite see. I'm not high enough up to see the uh, the uh, warning track. The 0-2 swung on. Excuse me, swing. We'll bounce her to the left side. Graham Mastros will pick it up. Mastros over to first is not in time. Josh Hegman beats out. A ball to open up the ball game. We'll see. That's probably going to be an error. Probably be a fielding error E5. We'll see how they score that. They actually give them a hit. And, you know, talk about a little bit of hometown scoring. Don't give your defender the error if you don't really have to. And Josh Hegeman will lead off this ball game with an infield single. It'll bring up Tommy O'Connor. Cincinnati team that's been able to get on guys early. A lot of runs scored. Scores the second most runs in the Big 12. <laughs> Looking at that during the uh, during my radio show last night, breaking ball swung on and missed, strike one to Tommy. But looking at that last night, Cincinnati scores a, has scored 180 runs, good for second in the Big 12. First is Texas Tech with 220. So that's Texas Tech, a lot of space, and then Cincinnati. But that's not a not a bad number to have at all. Pick back to first, unsuccessful. Sun shining down here, real bright day, especially with the three o'clock first pitch here in St. Louis, four o'clock back home in Cincinnati. Scoreboard blinked off as well. Pickoff attempt to first is unsuccessful. Not a lot of infrastructure around this uh, this yard here in St. Louis. Field, playing field really nice. Not much to write home about outside of the uh, confines. Umpire. Called time. I think he's just telling the, yes, he's telling the, the base umpire that he needs to keep score right now, keep counting score because the scoreboard is off, which he should be keeping count anyways. But I guess they're just double checking that there. See, that is home plate umpire's Wayne Harris. They're motioning to Daryl Morton Jr. out there at second base. Pitch bounces, goes about 58 feet. One ball, one strike, the count now to Tommy. It's funny, they do still have a uh, speedometer up. The pitch speed was still blinking up there, but the rest of the scoreboard is off right now. I don't know if someone hit a switch or what. 
feels kind of all crushed together here in this complex here in St. Louis. Looking straight out to center is their basketball arena. The 1-1 one -one misses just a bit up, up over the letters. Two balls, one strike to count, but basketball arena is actually, I mean, it's pretty impressive looking at it from here. And I know SLU basketball is kind of their, that's, that's their thing around here. They don't have a football team here. It's actually a really similar, somewhat similar in location to kind of how you see as that one off the end of the bat. That has some carry. Going back is Hayden Moore. Moore under it. It's playable. He'll catch it in deep center field running back. Didn't feel like Tommy really got a ton of that. It just kept carrying, kept carrying. It's 403 out to straightaway center field. So about eight feet farther. Well, it is eight feet, not about eight feet farther, but it is eight feet farther than at home. 395 out to straightaway center. 330 to the lines, 370 to the gaps. Probably about a seven foot wall out there. So not too high. Quick pick, really good pick there from Jackson Holmes. But Diving back in safely is Josh Hegeman. Runner on first, one man out We're in the top half of the first inning. Carrington cross up to the plate. Scoreboard back on there in right field. Cross shows bunt, bunts it down the right side. Holmes will have to scoop it up. PFP himself, he'll go two thirds of the way. Underhand flip to first for out number two. It will actually be scored as a sacrifice, but it was Carrington was trying to bunt for a base hit right there. It'll be a sacrifice one to three. Josh Cross will come to the plate. Runner in scoring position. Two men out here, top half the first inning, just underway here in St. Louis. Set from the right-handed Holmes. Out of the stretch, first pitch to Josh. Misses low and in. Ball and no strikes. Cross, as he has most Fridays, the backstop today, catching. It's funny, a guy with his stature and power at the plate, you, I always think you know, he's not the guy that if you had to guess what position he's going to play, I don't think catcher is going to be in my top two of primary and secondary positions, the 1-0. Swung on, popped up, foul out of play. One ball, one strike to count to him now. 63 degrees, game time temperature here today in St. Louis. That sun is beaten down a bit. Makes it feel a little bit warmer, but hey, not complaining. It was about 30, 32 degrees in Cincinnati when I left this morning. The set to check back to second and the 1-1 one -one pitch. That one will just miss away. Didn't miss by much. Two balls and a strike. No TV broadcast all weekend here. Just our, uh, our screen here, the radio broadcast for these three ball games this weekend. They don't have a trackman here either, which I've gotten so used to trackman through summer ball and through at home as well. That one will find the lower half of the zone, two balls, two strikes. That it's weird not having the uh, trackman data up in front of my face at this point. I've called so many games with it right there in front of me. And, you know, now I'm going to have to go three this weekend. Uh, poor me going three games this weekend without extra trackman data. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and missed, got him, strike three. Good breaking pitch, kind of pulled the chair out on him. Bearcats will put a runner in scoring position, but leave him stranded. We move on to the bottom half of the first inning, all scoreless. You're listening to Bearcat Baseball.
Bottom half of the first inning in St. Louis. Bearcats put a runner on, but can't do anything with it. We're all scoreless, and we'll bring on the first inning of work from Seth Logue. Logue, typical Friday guy. Didn't start, I think it was two Fridays ago. He was, he was feeling a little under the weather. First pitch from him will be a ball low. He'll be facing off against center fielder Hayden Moore. Moore. Batten from the left side, switch hitter, popped it, skied it left side. Going back, Christian Mitchell. Mitchell getting called off, running in Josh Hegeman. Hegeman will make the play easily for out number one. That ball sat up there a little bit. Not a ton of wind out here either today. Flags are pretty still, maybe about four or five miles an hour out to right. There's just enough of a wave for the flags to not be sitting flat on the flagpoles. Other than that, not much as far as wind goes. That one skied right side. Could be played, what will not be, it'll go out of play. No balls, one strike, the count to Ethan Sitzman. Recognized both of the top two names in this lineup. Both of them played summer ball over in the Appalachian League. Talk about that every once in a while when it comes up on these broadcasts. Big swing and he loses his bat. Tar that thing up a little bit. He called for a tiger stick right to the dugout after that. He's gonna he's gonna get his tiger stick. Don't want to lose it again. No balls, two strikes to count now on Sitzman. I think both Moore and Sitzman played for the Elizabethan River Rapids in the summer. It's the team that geographically is the closest to my team in Johnson City. No balls, two strikes to count to the right-handed Sitzman. His start for Logue, his fourth. 17 and two-thirds innings for him. Pitch misses up. Ball and two strikes now to Sitzman. Nobody on one out, bottom of the first inning. Logue, ERA a little inflated right now, but you only have 17 innings of work, so it's really not quite a big enough sample size yet. That one swung on line shot left field. That's gonna drop in front of Josh Hegman. That'll be a single for Ethan Sitzman. First hit of the day for St. Louis. Line drive single into left. Gonna put a runner on first, just one man out. 9-1-7 ERA for Logue, but as I said, only 17 and two-thirds innings of work, so not a huge sample size for that ERA number. 12 strikeouts to 11 walks. Only two hits and 17 and two-thirds, so. Pitch misses away. Patrick Closey at the plate. Dugout's real open on both sides. Bearcat dugout, that one skied foul out of play. Bearcat dugout on the third base side. St. Louis dugout over on the first base side. Yeah, dugouts, they have a little tiny, it's, I wouldn't even call it a roof, more of an awning really. The set and the 1-1 from Seth Lowe. Got to the stretch here, swung on, fly ball. Center field running in is Dalton Pearson. He's gonna be able to make the play for out number two. That one looked like it was, wasn't was gonna sit up quite as much as Dalton thought at first, but didn't really get too high. Pearson did have to take a couple of extra steps in right at the end, but yeah, not, not much of a roof on these dugouts. More of an awning, kind of blocks the sun, I guess. Not much protection from foul balls or anything either. It stretches kind of far out into that foul territory. Foul territory kind of big down the lines, really. Bullpens are off the field as well, so you're not having to deal with bullpens here on the field, which is nice. Pitch misses away. I think there's there's a few things that I do feel like you would kind of expect from D1 facilities, and bullpens not on the field, I, I mean, is kind of one of them that I would think. Opposite way, right side, that one's gonna cut foul territory, just barely not playable for Landon Vitterick. That's gonna drop foul. That ball hit, talk about there how there was a decent amount of foul territory up where Landon was kind of in more regular depth right field. There's nowhere near as much as more towards the infield. And so that ball didn't cut a ton, but hit the top of the wall there down the right field line. One ball, one strike to count. Runner on first, two outs, bottom half of the first inning. Cole Smith at the plate. No batting gloves for Cole. Don't see that a whole lot anymore. The 1-1, one, one, ground ball up the middle, diving and just past the outstretched glove of Christian Mitchell. 
It's going to be a two-out single into center for St. Louis. Put runners on first and second now for the left fielder, Tyler Fogarty. Fogarty, senior here. Funny, he's from St. Louis. He's from here. But he went to college at Chaminade over in Honolulu, Hawaii, to start off his collegiate career. Then went to Notre Dame. It's funny, some of these guys, you know, you know, actually, now that I'm looking at it, he was the only one I looked at at first. chaminade has got to be a high school here in St. Louis. First pitch misses, or fi finds his own for a ball. Actually looking at it. Yeah, it's de it definitely is, because he was the only one I looked at at first. But, but still, went to Notre Dame out of high school. That could still be a high school. I mean, I guess, I guess you, there is Notre Dame High School. So that pitch will miss low, one ball, one strike. Runners on first and second. Two men out. set from low. The 1-1 one, one misses low. Two balls and a strike. Logue, as we look at his numbers, not necessarily a guy who's going to overpower a ton of hitters. He's about a strikeout and inning guy. A little bit less than that. Not, a sh not quite as little as a strikeout every other inning. That one's skied in the center. Definitely playable. Kind of a Bermuda Triangle there. Coming in Christian Mitchell, he's going to, or coming in Dalton Pearson, he's going to call everyone off and he will Make the play for out number three. Billikens leave a pair. We go to the second inning. Golf scoreless. You're listening to Bearcat Baseball. Top half of the second in St. Louis. Bearcats and Billikens all scoreless. It'll be Hunter, Jesse, Luke, Sepsik, and Landon Bitterick due up for the Bearcats. After a pretty good first inning for Jackson Home. Didn't really have to throw a ton of pitches in that first inning either. Was able to get through it with just one runner on base. First pitch to Sepsik. Misses up and away. Take it just a little up, a little away. I'll give you one. I won't give you both. Ball and no strikes. That softball field right over the left field wall here. They actually have big nets uh, at the left field wall to catch home run balls called strike. So if the softball team and baseball team are playing at the same time, then no baseballs would end up in the softball field. There's no softball game today, but I know they do play tomorrow and Sunday here. So. I think there'd be, there's going to be a little bit of overlap. That one fouled straight back. Ball and two strikes to count now. I think every time a ball hits the net, that crowd might, either crowd might kind of prop underneath the, the screen. Probably going to really catch it every single time there's a ball to the, the net. The one, two misses away. Two balls. Two strikes to count. Wind up, well, fly, foul, out of play. That broadcast that I do have up on the on the screen, I do have the, the stats up on the screen there. It's not the top of the first inning. 
That one right in the middle of the infield. Third baseman calling off his pitcher. That's Graham Mastro. He's going to make the grab for out number one. P5 there is the first out. Yeah, the stat broadcast is still in the first inning right now. Must have something. Something must have went wrong with it because, yeah, it shows still inning number one here, which it is not the first inning. Top of the second. Nobody on, one out. First pitch to Luke Sepsik is the ball low. Wind up in the 1 0. That one will miss away. Two balls, no strikes. It is funny, you know, at home, we're every everyone's kind of up above the the field. So it's kind of a kind of more of a sound tunnel down field level at home. You can't hear quite as much of just the random chatter and whatnot. We're here, not not very, uh, let's see, I, in, the, in the nicest way to put it, the uh, atmosphere is, uh, is lacking. Not much of an atmosphere. <laughs> you're, not, you, you're not getting uh, record student ticket numbers for this game today. That's, uh, that's the way we'll put it. But because of that, kind of a quiet crowd. And you can hear all the, a little bit of chatter and kind of somewhat of heckling. Luke Sepsik will take a ball outside. It'll be ball four. He'll walk on five pitches. Put a runner on in each of the first two innings for Cincinnati now. Brings up Landon Bittering. Bitter has been an everyday starter pretty much the whole season. 231 average coming into today. Pickoff attempt first, unsuccessful. Jackson Holmes, another guy I was mentioning, uh, top two in the St. Louis lineup were playing the Appalachian League. Jackson Holmes did as well. First pitch is a ball away. Jackson Holmes actually threw a no hitter in the Appalachian League in a game with the Elizabethan River Riders. It was a Sunday ball game. He only plays seven innings on Sundays in the Appalachian League, but complete game, no hitter. You know, I mean, seven innings, nine innings. It's 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 still there as a CG in your stats. It doesn't matter what how many innings your ball game is. Still a no hitter. Threw that in 2022. The 1-0. That one misses low. Two balls, no strikes. Threw that it was against the, uh, it was against Greenville in Tennessee, which that ballpark in Greenville is funny because they built that for a high A team down in Tennessee. And <laughs> the high A league said no after they built it. Not, not much thinking when it came to that. Ball misses high, three balls, no strikes. But they use it in the Appalachian League still now. That'll bring a meeting from Knox Preston. Knox Preston sounds like a broken record. Another guy that played in the Appalachian League. <laughs> I looked at his roster. I, was, I looked at his lineup. I was like, you know, I recognize four of these names from Summer Ball, which, you know, it's a, it's a good league to use. St. Louis uses it well. I mean, they send some of their better guys when they're younger out to it. Clearly, it works for them. Three balls, no strikes to count here to Landon Vitterick. Runner on first, one man out. We're in the top half of the second inning, all scoreless between Cincinnati and St. Louis. The 3-0. That one will find the inner half. They're called strike one. Yeah, St. Louis campus-wise, somewhat similar to Cincinnati in that it's very urban. It's actually... I, I, I don't know the exact distance, but it feels closer to downtown St. Louis than UC is to downtown Cincinnati. And it's not like UC is far from downtown Cincinnati. That one will be fouled off. Three balls, two strikes to count to Vitterick. Holmes is able to work himself back into the count after going down 3-0 to start the AB. Runner on first, one man out, countdown count. Three balls, two strikes, one out. The set in the 3-2. Swung on, tipped back to the screen. Now it will remain. A little bit of wind coming in left to right. A couple of gusts here, I think. I don't think we have really much to worry about as far as weather goes in this first game of the uh, series this weekend. 
The 3 2 again just misses up. Didn't miss by much. Good eye land and bitter. Back to back walks for Cincinnati. Puts runners on first and second with one man out for Christian Mitchell. Going to bring a meeting at the mound for St. Louis. <laughs> St. Louis's coaching staff, their head coach, Darren Hendrickson, 17th year of their three assistants. <laughs> Most tenured one is in his fourth season. So, you know, you're. Your head coach has been here a while, and it's kind of a musical chairs of your assistants, which is not uncommon when it comes to college baseball and the fact of um, just the fact that you're only paying two assistant coaches. So well, your volley's going to come in. Your volley's going to try to leave to get a, a paid job somewhere. And he gets that, that carousel, per se, of of players, or of coaches. Meeting is adjourned. Christian Mitchell will step in. <laughs> I think it's funny, they, there is a on-deck circle in the turf. Home plate umpire just looked at Dalton Pearson who was swinging in that, that drawn out on-deck circle and told him to move over from it. I don't know why they would have the circle if you're not supposed to go on deck in said circle. Stepping off and an acknowledgement pick back to second. Bearcats looking to start off strong in this three game weekend series against St. Louis. Last non-conference series of the season. That one popped up left side. Running in is Tyler Fogarty. Bogarty's going to give way to Hayden Moore. Moore will make the play in shallow left center for out number two. Kind of everything that could have happened, that's one of the ones you were really not hoping for. Not even moving the runners over in that at bat. Now you got to try to score somebody with two outs. Runner in scoring position, two outs. Similar scenario to last inning. This time you do have the runner on first as well for Cincinnati. Dalton Pearson at the plate. Ninth man in the lineup, last man to bat for Cincinnati. Swung on, skied right side, foul territory, running over Cole Smith. Smith looks to be under it, it's playable, and he'll make the grab for out number three. Bearcats put runners on first and second with one man out, can't do anything with it. We go to the bottom half of the second inning, still scoreless, just seeing the Bearcat baseball. Bottom of the second here in St. Louis. Pretty quick first inning for uh, Seth Logue. He did have two base runners, but didn't have to throw a lot of pitches. Most pitches a batter saw in that inning was four. So he didn't, didn't have to throw a ton of pitches to get through that first inning, even with the two base runners. He's gonna face off against the third baseman. It'll be Graham Mastros. Six, seven, eight due up in this Billiken lineup. That one fouled off, strike number one. It's funny too, I was about halfway here and realized that I did not have a scoreboard for, you know, someone who, you know, baseball is the main sport that I call, called strike there. Oh, no balls, two strikes. I always seem to loot, like, just don't have a scorebook handy for me. So, <laughs> I did have to drive 
make a detour as I was coming into St. Louis to find a Dick Sporting Goods. That was a really good pitch on the upper half of the plate. Just missed for ball number one. Ball and two strikes to count. Yeah, I had to make a detour coming into St. Louis, get a scorebook for <laughs> these three games and keep it around and probably just use it for the rest of the, the spring season here. Something that's funny, you know, in the same sense in baseball, there's a lot of like superstitious things and stuff. Like that one fouled back, and you can hear that. You got on the uh, microphone, but like the walk-up songs, very superstitious for some people, and for broadcasters, a lot of times it is a scorebook. Where for me, it's like, yeah, I personally like the little league scorebooks from Big Sporting Goods. <laughs> the two-two, that one fouled back as well into the screen counter remain. It's like six bucks from Dick Sporting Goods. You can buy it. It's only 20 games. That's that's the downside of it, but it's like exactly what I want in a scorebook. And they're really readily accessible too. I was able to come here and buy the exact one that I normally use. Check swing. Didn't go far enough. Ball misses up. Three balls, two strikes to count. Mastros has fought his way back into a full count. Three balls, two strikes to count. The three two pitch. Swung on. Fly ball center field. Looks playable. Under it is. Dalton Pearson, Pearson will make the grab for out number one. Had a lot of carry on it, well, had a lot of height on it, didn't have a lot of carry on it. F8 there to start off the second inning. It's gonna bring up the designated hitter, that's Easton Richter. First pitch Richter, he shows bunt, pulls back, strike nonetheless. No balls, one strike to count. See, do we have, we do have the bottom of the second on here now. So the stat, the live stats have in fact caught up. Second pitch to Richter, kind of fisted that breaking ball off to the side. The release didn't look right. One ball, one strike. That one. Swung on, foul ball. Ball and two strikes to count. And Logue's been a good, been good at working ahead of hitters early in this ball game. And that's something that gives you a lot of confidence as a pitcher when you can go out there and get ahead in the count right away. The one, two, that one fouled off, or that one actually stays in play left side. Looks like it was going to be way foul. Christian Mitchell under it, and he'll make the grab for out number two. It's going to be a pop out there. That one looked like way off the end of the bat. Thought it was going to go and kind of cut foul, but sat right there down the left side. Knox Preston will come to the plate. Nobody on two outs. First pitch to him. Misses low for a ball. Knox Preston, 317 hitter coming into today. The 1 0. Swung on. Little chip shot into left, running over Josh Hegeman. He'll be under it and make the play for out number three. Real easy three up, three down for Seth Logue. We move on to the third. Still scoreless. Still singer Bearcat baseball.
Top half of the third inning in St. Louis. Back up to the top of the lineup for Cincinnati. Still scoreless, Josh Hegman, Tommy O'Connor, Carrington Cross, the three do up. Still Jackson Holmes on the mound. It's funny, Jackson Holmes pretty easy to spot because of his jersey number. He wears number 88. Closest number to him, another pitcher that wears 58. Nobody within 30 of his number. Called strike on the outer half, starts off the third inning for Josh Hegeman. Hegeman singled to start off the ball game, a little chip shot to the left side that he was able to beat out. It's really kind of a scores discretion base hit rather than a uh, an error, which was funny because it went at Kansas State a couple weeks ago. That one would not be a scorer's discretion hit if that drops. Charging in from right field, it will not, was Patrick Clausey, and he will make the grab for out number one. Good running grab there in right. But, yeah, two weeks ago uh, in Lawrence when – or no, that's Manhattan. Lawrence is where KU plays. Manhattan is where uh, Kansas State plays. Same idea, though. But – Two weeks ago in Manhattan, there was a play that was somewhat similar. Ball hit to the outfield. I was like, you know, you probably could have tacked a hit on. They didn't put a hit on it, and then Cincinnati ultimately got no hit in the ball game. And then thinking about it after the fact, I'm like, all right, you know, honestly, don't think I would have wanted the one singular hit to be a uh, kind of scores discretion, probably should have been an error base runner. The 1-0 misses low, two balls, no strikes. <laughs> Last week, Cincinnati almost had a uh, no-hitter. Tommy Boba won Big 12 Pitcher of the Week with eight innings of one-hit ball. Worked into the ninth and a one-run, a one-nothing ball game. Called strike on the lower half, two balls and a strike. And Kansas leadoff hitter bunted to get on base, which, you know, the unwritten rules of baseball, the old heads will come and say you shouldn't bunt with a no-hitter, which, I mean, I agree with, but it was a one-run game. You still got to try to win that ball game. Kansas wasn't getting base runners on in any other facet. That one skied foul to the left side. A little bit of an offer from Graham Mastery, so it's going to find its way out. Two balls, two strikes to count now. Top half of the third inning still scoreless. Not a ton of action. Both teams have had a runner touch scoring, uh, get into scoring position. Bearcats have actually had a runner in scoring position in each of the first two innings, but nobody past second base. That one just misses away. Good eye from Tommy. Three balls, two strikes to count. Tommy flew out deep into center his first time up in the first inning. The wind up in the three, two. That one finds the lower half. Tommy was ready to flip his bat back and take his trip to first, but he'll go down looking. Second strikeout of the day for Jackson Holmes. First strikeout since he ended the inning with a strikeout to Josh Cross in the first. Nobody on two outs now for Cincinnati. Top half of the third inning. Carrington Cross at the plate. Cincinnati all gray today for Friday. Ground ball left side. Glove diving feet first. Grand Mastros. He's up to his feet across the first and makes the play. Pretty good play from Mastros and an easy one, two, three inning for Jackson Holmes and the Billikens. We're on to the bottom half of the third, still scoreless. Listening to Bearcat Baseball.
Bottom half of the third inning in St. Louis. Bearcats and Billiken still all scoreless. One, two, three, top half of the third for Cincinnati. Seth Logue back out on the mound for another inning of work. Real efficient second for him, a one, two, three second. All real kind of weak contact. Not a lot of stuff that you were really worried about falling. Pitch will miss up for ball number one. Nine hole hitter, nine, one, two, due up for St. Louis. This is Austin Newick. That one checked, swung on. They're gonna appeal down the first. He did not. Two balls and no strikes. This is a quick appeal from Josh Cross behind the plate. Defensively for the Bearcats. I guess I never talked about defensive positioning. Left to right in the outfield, Josh Hegeman, Dalton Pearson, Landon Bitterick. That one soared right there for strike one. Infields to left to right, Carrington Cross, Christian Mitchell, Luke Sefcik, Tommy O'Connor, Seth Logue. Pitching to Josh Cross to complete the battery. Two balls, one strike to count here to the nine hole hitter. The two one, swung on ground ball left side, laying out for it. Both Carrington Cross and Christian Mitchell, neither of them can grab it. It was just in a spot where neither glove really could get to it. It's gonna be a leadoff single for Austin Newick and the Billikens. So, you know, I have a really easy storyline for an inning about what is a Billiken, but I will save that for maybe tomorrow. Maybe if we get a couple of longer innings. Pitching change, mid-inning pitching change, we'll hit on what is a Billiken. That's what we're gonna, what we're gonna wait for here. Called strike on the outer half, back to the top of the lineup and hated more. You know, some of those longer form stories you gotta hold on to. You can't just give it right away because then nobody's gonna be interested by the uh, seventh or eighth inning. Bottom half of the third here, runner on first, the 0-1 swung on, fouled straight back. Couple of flinches back here. No balls, two strikes to count. Yeah, don't really need to talk about the uh, ball hitting the, the screen because that microphone's picking up every single time. The 0-2 just misses away. Ball and two strikes. Hayden Moore flew out his first time up to lead off the ball game. Got a runner on first here. If Seth Logue can draw a ground ball, you might be able to turn two on it. Moore is a pretty good runner there out of the box, though. So it'd have to be, it couldn't be a soft hit ground ball for him to be able to get two outs on it. Right now, too, you're just going to attack him. You have the one-two count. You're up in the count. Like Seth Logue has worked up in the count pretty much all day today. He's been really good at that. The one-two breaking pitch just missed up. Two balls, two strikes to count. That single ended a streak of four consecutive batters retired by Logue. Pickoff attempt to first. Wasn't really an acknowledgement pick, but it ended up working that way just because Newick wasn't that far off the bag. Big green batter's eye out in center. That's just about one shade off from the rest of the wall. The 2-2 two -two misses up. Something that I just now noticed it looking out. It's going to be the only thing I noticed for the rest of the way. It's the fact that that green on the batter's eye is absolutely a different shade of green than the green on the wall. The set pick off the first almost spiked it in Logue. Three balls, two strikes to count. We're all scoreless here in the bottom half of the third inning. Bunch of zeros hung up so far by starting pitchers. Set from Logue. And the 3-2. Swung on, popped up, left side. I think that's going to cut out of play. Running for it's Josh Hegeman. He's going to run out of room. That'll drop in the Bearcat bullpen down the left field line. Count will remain. Three balls, two strikes. Base runner on first, Newick. Not really a stolen base threat is Newick. As he runs right there. Fouled off right side. I was going to say, I didn't see any stolen base stats for him. But, of course, you know, the second I say that, he moves on the pitch. Actually had a pretty good jump there. But Hayden Moore will fight that one off. And live to see another pitch. That's this pitch number eight of the AB right here. Long set. And the 3-2 again. Runner goes again. Swung on, popped up, foul out of play. Just keeps fighting, fighting, fighting. 
find your put away pitch here. You gotta find something. You don't wanna lose the hitter. If anything, make him put the ball in play. Can't be too careful though, and then you're gonna have one deposit over the wall. Quick pick, actually almost worked. No runs on three hits for St. Louis so far in this ball game. Two of the three hits came in the first, and then the third is the one that led off this inning. Pickoff attempt almost got him, and he just missed. Diving back safely was Newick. It's funny, that's probably Logue's fourth pickoff attempt of the AB, and that was his best one. Three balls, two strikes to count still. Pitch nine now. The set. And he got him almost jumping again. You can tell Newig's still trying to go on first motion there. Almost gotten him caught there at first twice. That one swung on. Chip shot right center field. Charging in Landon Vitterick. That's going to drop in between Landon Vitterick and Dalton Pearson. But because of that one kind of sitting in the air, Newig was only able to make it to second even with going on the pitch. Back to back singles lead off the third for St. Louis. Ethan Sitzman will come to the plate. Sitzman batting from the right side. Looks like Carrington will take a couple steps in at third base. I think it's kind of funny to watch third baseman when there's the runner on second because they're not playing square to the plate. They're playing kind of staggered, more focused on the base runner in case he breaks. It's kind of funny to me with how, how every third baseman kind of does it somewhat the same. One ball, no strikes to count on Sitzman. Sitzman did single his first time up. Single here would likely score the first run of the day. That one didn't miss by much. Two balls and no strikes to Ethan Sitzman. Not really even a loss of command here in this inning for Logue. Swung on, fouled off. Just a couple of good ABs from St. Louis so far. Two balls, one strike to count. A pair of singles, he had to throw nine pitches to Hayden Moore. Moore was just able to fight, 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 and then find one that he could just kind of toss into the right center. The 2-1 swung on line shot. Running in is Josh Hegeman. He's going to make the grab far off the base, throwing into second. They're going to double him off. Newig, I don't think he was off on the pitch. I think he just thought that was going to drop. And it's going to be a 7-4 to four double play right there. That was Josh Hegeman into Luke Sevcik. And, I mean, that kills a lot of threat from St. Louis right there. All of a sudden, it's a runner on first with two men out. Runner on first, two men out. First pitch here, swung on and missed, breaking ball. That's the that's the kind of put away pitch you were looking for in some of those two strike counts that you just couldn't find if you were Seth Logue. Finally getting it there on an 0-0. Good pitch to start off the A-B with. The 0-1, swung on, fouled back, right up over the heads here. I do usually talk about, you know, my probabilities of getting a foul ball and Probability would have to be a really high pop-up that just gets over the screen comes to me. Netting right in front, pickoff attempt back to first, unsuccessful. We're in the bottom of the third, still scoreless. St. Louis threatened for a minute, and then a double play, a very unconventional double play, was able to shut down a bit of a threat. Another pickoff attempt to first. I think if you're Seth Logue, you gotta just worry about the hitter. You're up 0-2 on him, you got two outs. Just go at him, get things over with. Billikens, a lot of guys starting pretty much every single game for him. A lot of 19 and 19s, five of them actually, the 0-2. Misses low and away. This would be 20 of 20 for all of these guys. And Patrick uh, Closey is one of them. 479 average for him coming into today. He is 0 for 1. Another pickoff attempt. One ball, two strikes. 479 average. 71 ABs. 
34 for 71. He has five triples as well as five homers. Power numbers are there for sure. 17 extra base hits. So half of his hits are extra base hits as well. <laughs> what a line early in the season. The one two misses up. Two balls, two strikes to count to. Big lefty from here in St. Louis. He was at Purdue before coming back home to play for SLU. A lot of transfers on this roster. The runner goes, the 2-2 runs in and hits him. Got him right in the Evo shield, didn't even feel it. Gonna be the first hit batsman of the day for Seth Logue. Actually, first free base he's given up at all. Doesn't have any walks either. Cole Smith will come to the plate. First and second, two men out. Smith singled in the first. Another situation here where a single likely brings in the first run of the day. Definitely think the uh, windmill would be spinning from the third base coach there should the ball get into the outfield here with two outs. First pitch to him right back up the middle. It's going to get gloved at second by Sepsik. He's not going to have anywhere to go with it. Runner commits to the plate, and they throw him out at the plate. He did not throw him out. He slid around the tag. I don't think anyone, I don't think he got tagged. And I, I don't think he got tagged. I don't think he tagged the home plate either. I I thought Hayden Moore dove around the plate. Call time and try to peel that possibly. That'd be the first run of the day. I, I think with, with where that, with where that play was, Moore had to go around the base because the ball was there and Cross had it, but they're not gonna do any appeal. It's gonna be the first run of the day. That one's gonna get under the glove of Carrington Cross. Big wave around third for another runner. That's gonna be a second run. And quick little change in the ball game like that. You go from what was looked like gonna be a put out at the plate to hang another zero is now two pitches later, a two nothing baseball game. Single for Fogarty. Let's see if they scored the other one a single as well. They did, they did score it a single as it should have been. So two nothing to score now in the bottom half of the third inning. That one, chip shot right center field. I don't know if that's gonna be playable running in, it's not. Rounding third and scoring now is Cole Smith. And just station to station hitting here now for St. Louis after tight call at the plate. Now you put up three. Made Cincinnati pay. Three nothing, Billikens. That's three singles in a row after the hit batsman. That's going to bring a visit at the mound. Let's see who went out there. I think it is Jordan Vishal that's out there right now. Yeah, it is. Three nothing to score. A little bit of an offensive explosion here. But offensive explosion where it's been all singles. It's now five singles in this inning. Five singles and a hit batsman have been all of the uh, all the base runners, all the scoring so far. This shows how one tight play, if you let it get to you, can turn around an entire inning. Runners on first and second, still two men out. Vogel check back to second. That one swung on, another little tapper into left center and that's gonna drop as well. That'll turn around and score another run. Fogarty will score from second and doesn't always have to be pretty, it just has to work. And that's a bunch of real weak singles. I mean, honestly, a little like pitching wedge shots from the plate. Right center, right center, left center, and now it's a four run inning for the Billikens. And they will have batted through the lineup now when Knox Preston comes up. He's the ninth batter to hit in the inning. That's, three that's four consecutive singles, I think on four pitches too. Yes, four consecutive pitches, four singles for those runs. That one swung on and missed, strike one from Knox Preston. And all to think you felt like you could have been out of that inning after the uh, 
single that got held in the infield by Cole, the Cole Smith single that got held in the infield. That pitch will just miss inside. One ball, one strike to count. Funny too, even with now kind of a hit parade, swung on, fouled back, ball and two strikes. Even with a little bit of a hit parade, Seth Logue's worked ahead in pretty much every count. He hasn't had to throw a lot of pitches to guys. So it's not like his pitch count is even getting run up by what's going on here in this third inning. The one, two, misses up, two balls, two strikes to count. Preston flew out to end the last inning. Runners on first and second. The 2-2 two -two misses up, ball three. Almost like he's overthrowing a little bit now, trying to get out of this inning. The set, the check back to second from Logan, the 3-2. Swung on and another little chip shot into right field. That's gonna drop. Runners were going on the pitch on 3-2. That's gonna score another run easily. I wish I had the trackman with the exit velocity because there has not been an exit velocity over 80 miles an hour in this inning. I mean, it has been all weak little singles into right and left. There has not been anything all that impressive. And now Cincinnati's gonna have to run a pitcher down to the bullpen. Five run inning for the Villikens. Austin Newick's gonna come to the plate. He Led off the inning. That pitch will miss up. Ball and no strikes. Led off the inning with a single. I think that single was actually somewhat hard hit. That single was through the left side on the ground. That one is not a little chip shot. And that's fly ball. That could be gone. And that is. Three run home run Austin Newig. And it just rips this thing open. Eight run inning now for the Billikens. Ball started rolling and one bad play, or one, one play that didn't go the Bearcats way. You let that go all the way downhill and now one, two, three, four, five, six, six hits in a row. Headlined by that home run right there. Eight nothing, St. Louis. <laughs> Low did pitch from behind in that AB. He was down 1-0 in the count. Not that it makes a difference. Home run from Newick. That was his fourth of the season. Lineup flips back up to the top. Base is empty, two outs. Eight runs scored, all eight runs have been with two outs. Hayden Moore will come back up to the plate. Swung on, that one's gone. Bat flip from Hayden Moore. Back to back jacks for St. Louis and it just gets from bad, <laughs> from not good to bad to worse to just kind of an awful inning. I don't, did, he, did he eject Hayden Moore? I think Aiden Moore's got ejected for the bat flip. They're gonna call in the umpire. I think Aiden Moore's gonna get ejected for that bat flip. Because he did, he hit that ball and flipped his bat. And I I think this umpire crew might eject Aiden Moore for that, which I don't, he, he didn't even, I don't, he wasn't looking at Seth Logue even when he flipped it. He kind of flipped it looking back to his own dugout. I do think they gave a bench warning legitimately the pitch right before it. So, I mean, if anything, you can't get the bench warning and then go flip your bat the next pitch. It's kind of, I mean, not kind of self-inflicted. It is very self-inflicted. But home run for Hayden Moore, that makes it 9 nothing now. That home run from Hayden Moore, his sixth of the season. Umpires conversing down the first base line.
Wasn't even a real dramatic bat flip either. The bat didn't go over his shoulder. He just kind of flipped it in the air right there. McCollin, Baron Hendrickson, head coach over. I didn't see a hook, but it looked like he kind of said to him, yeah. Jackson Holmes will run down into the bullpen to stay warm. It's been a long inning. All nine runs now, too, have been with two outs. Ethan Sitzman, they sent him out of the way. Almost looks like they sent him back to the dugout. He's supposed to, he's due up next, but I think he just walked. They sent him away from the plate and walked there. They 100%, they 100% ejected Hayden Moore because this has been a very long conversation right here. <laughs> yeah, they're still conversing. Home plate umpire Wayne Harris marking in his, uh, marking in his scorecard. See if Hayden Moore has to leave. I don't even. I don't think they even have. Um, I don't think they even have locker rooms around here. I think they got to go to the basketball arena for locker rooms. It's like a batting tunnel that I, I thought. What I thought was a batting tunnel down there. I don't know. If he's ejected, he's got to leave the dugout. So <laughs> I guess. I guess we'll see real quickly here. Um. So it's definitely a home run. It's it's. The, the home run isn't overturned no matter what. This is a really long. This <laughs> it's been a really long conversation about, I guess, yeah, ejecting a kid for a bat flip. And I can't see. I didn't watch him walk into the dugout either to see if he started packing up or anything. That'll be the end of the day for Seth Logue as well. So, Logue got two outs e pretty easy in this inning and then nine runs after that. So, we'll take a break. We'll tell you about the new pitcher. I think it's probably going to be, uh, it's probably gonna be Bradley, um, uh, Bradley Coulter, that's his name. But we'll take a quick break and um, come back and tell you about the new pitcher. Nine, nine, nothing in the bottom of the third. Bottom half of the third inning, pitching change. Will be right-handed Joey Hearth. Hearth, six foot three, righty, he's a junior from Hopkins High School, Hopkins, Minnesota. He played at Indiana State before this year. He will throw a strike to Ethan Sitzman. Sitzman, 12th man to bat for St. Louis. All but confirmed that they did eject Hayden Moore. 
That pitch will miss low. Bearcats got two outs with no run scored. Now it's 9 nothing. We're still in the same inning. The 1-1. One, one. Swung on, ground ball left side. Gloved by Carrington Cross. Throw will go across to first to Tommy O'Connor, and that'll bandage the bleeding somewhat. Nine runs. We are, we're on to the fourth. 9 nothing. Billikens. You're listening to Bearcat Baseball. Top half of the fourth inning, nine nothing St. Louis. Nine two out runs in the third. Hayden Moore <laughs> now can confirm was ejected. It'll be Brendan Stressler taking over in center field for him. You can see him toss his bag up over his shoulder and have to walk out. Swung on, popped up, foul out of play. Daring to, uh, Josh Cross, Hunter Jesse, Luke Sefcik. Do up for Cincinnati. <laughs> you got your work cut out for you now, that's for sure. Jackson Holmes still on the mound for the Billikens. We'll wind up in the 0-1. Called strike. See with that last inning too, it was a nine run inning, but every single hit came, almost every hit came with either on the first or the second pitch of the at bat. So it didn't even feel like a long inning. It just felt like, oh man, they just they keep hitting the ball. The 0-2. That one just misses up and away. Ball and two strikes. Would, will be interested to see if this gets a little more out of hand if you're playing with the mercy rule or not this weekend. With it being the non-conference series, there's a chance. The one, two. Breaking pitch, broke too much. Pretty good ball there actually. The pitch design, pitch shaping is all real good. times the wind up in the 2-2 swung on fly ball right field I got a lot of carry no doubt about it it's gone a home run Josh Cross goes yard at least starts to pull things back a little bit hey you got to start somewhere Cross this home run will make it nine to one now that home run really no doubt there for the Eastern Michigan transfer. I'll bring on punter Jesse. If you can't tell, score of the game. No uh, no elbow bump out of the dugout right there. You can tell because of the, the point in that game. Sixth of the season for Cross. Hunter Jesse fouls one straight back. Hey, you do still have a lot of time in this game, at least in Cincinnati. I mean, if. Pitching settles in, you're down eight runs, but you got still really the fourth, still got time. The 1 missed as well, ball and a strike. Get some long ABs, fight through things. Cloud coverage pretty much fully covered now, which not complaining all too much. It was with the, the sun out shining right on us, just cooking us a little bit. The 1-1. One, one. That one's gone too. Back-to-back -back home run, Cincinnati. <laughs> it feels like it's a wind tunnel in right field. There's no wind, but 
once someone gets a hold of one out there to right, it's just see ya. Back to back jacks to lead off the fourth for the Bearcats. <laughs> Hunter Jesse will go yard as well, nine to two. No, again, no elbow bump, still not close enough. Seven run ball game. I said at the beginning of this ball game, this is Cincinnati team that scores the second most runs in the Big 12. You're scoring 8.18 runs per game. But you're gonna need all 8.18 of those runs today. It's called strike, Luke Sefsik. Hunter Jesse, the Indiana transfer, grad transfer from me. Leo one misses low, one ball, one strike. That home run. His first as a Bearcat, actually. Yeah, first Cincinnati home run for Hunter Jesse. He, he, he hit a couple as a Hoosier. It's not like it, he's played a lot of college baseball. Not like it's his first one ever. It's called strike there. Ball and two strikes to count to Sepsis. 9 2 the score. Back to back homers to lead off this inning. That one will miss low. Two balls, two strikes. Sefcik walked back in the second. Made it to second, but was stranded there. Out of the windup, the 2-2. Two -two. Just misses low. Sefcik, you talk about a yes, yes, no hitting approach. That was about a yes, 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 maybe. No, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> was just barely under the zone. Three balls, two strikes to count. Nobody on, nobody out. Bearcats have put up two here in the fourth. Got to start crawling back into this, the three, two. Ground ball up the middle. It's going to get into center field for a single. <laughs> kind of a courtesy dive from Ethan Sitzman, but that ball was a good 10, 15 feet away from him. Single for Sepsik. Three hits to lead off the fourth for Cincinnati. Landon Vitterick will come to the plate. Runner on first, nobody out. Vitterick, another guy that definitely has the giddy up. He can get one out of here. Seen him hit a couple this season. That one finds the zone, outer half called strike one. Lefty righty matchup here. Vitterick batting from the left side, the 0-1. That one misses low and, in, low and away, actually. One ball, one strike. Landon walked his first time up. Now Landon had a pair of home runs against Northern Kentucky back third game of the season. Hasn't homered since. He's gone over a month now without a home run. The 1-1 breaking pitch finds the upper half. Ball and two strikes to count. If you score two runs in every inning from here on out, you win the ball game. So if you're Cincinnati, you can't give up anything, but you would still win. A check from Holmes out of the stretch, right down the middle, the one, two. That one will miss low. Kind of misplayed by Knox Preston behind the plate. He wasn't able to catch it clean. Half paying attention to some of the uh, NCAA tournament basketball games here at Mount Stewart. Nothing real interesting now. Do have uh, conflicting uh, Bearcat games tomorrow. That pitch will miss low. NIT versus Bradley is tomorrow at, I think it's two It's two o'clock Eastern. So it'd be one o'clock our time. Or yeah, yeah, it would be. It'd be one o'clock, one o'clock St. Louis time. First pitch here is Three o'clock, no, two o'clock. I think three o'clock Eastern time, the first pitch. Three, two, swung on, skied left side. Running in Tyler Fogarty. Fogarty, Fogarty regular depth left field. He's gonna be under it and make the grab for out number one. Vitterick works his count to full, flies out. Bring up Christian Mitchell. Yeah, two, 2 p.m. local time start here. So three o'clock back 
home in Cincinnati. So two o'clock Eastern uh, NIT tip off, three o'clock Eastern baseball first pitch. Uh, NIT game against the Bradley Braves. Bunt shown, bunt pulled back, back pick to first. Everything unsuccessful there, it's one ball, no strike. Pay attention to on Sunday um, with Indiana State's NIT game. Should Indiana State lose and Cincinnati win tomorrow, Bearcats would get another home game in the NIT. Actually drove right through Terre Haute, Indiana to get here today. The 1 0 is called strike. Drove down onto Indiana State's campus. I'm not going to pass one of those cities with a, a school that I've never been to and not go down to its campus. Drove by, saw, saw the Larry Bird statue, the 1 1. Misses low. Cincinnati and Indiana State's programs have a lot of uh, parallels, actually. You know, uh, really, I mean, a, a top tier of all time NBA player from back <laughs> way long ago. I don't think Indiana, Indiana State doesn't have any championships like Cincinnati does. Bunt shown, bunt drop down, pretty good bunt. Jackson Holmes is going to scoop it up, throw over to first is just in time. It's going to be a sacrifice one to three for. Christian Mitchell move the runner over to second, but now you got two outs. And the, the kind of the cool thing, talking a little more about basketball, there is that that uh, region per se that you're in in the NIT is a lot of kind of old school, like old timey matchups. You had San Francisco on on Wednesday, and that that big buzzer beater three from Seamus Dacosius in overtime to win that one. Pitch misses in, but San, San Francisco, kind of a, an old-timey, you know, really good program back in the 50s. Bradley, another program. Bradley and Cincinnati played the longest NCAA basketball game of all time, went seven overtimes back in, like, the 1970s. And then, yeah, if you would get Indiana State as well, another one with a lot of history, but not a lot of current history. Called strike. Kind of cool to see some of those matchups, matchups you wouldn't normally see. One thing I like about uh, how the how base the baseball schedule works is you do kind of play everyone locally at least at some point. The one one, Masood finds the bottom half. That one grazed the shins. Ball and two strikes. Not quite the shoe top. The one two, check swung on. He did not go. Ooh, wow, they're gonna. Can't say he did. Bearcats get two back. Leave a runner stranded on second. We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. 9 2 St. Louis. You're listening to the Bearcat Baseball. Bottom half, bottom half of the fourth year in St. Louis. Bearcats trail 9-2. First pitch from Cincinnati is the ball away. 
First full inning of work for Joey Hurth. That pitch will miss up and away. Up for St. Louis, the 2-0 misses away. St. Louis sent 12 men to the plate last inning. Scored nine runs. Cincinnati did pull two back with a pair of home runs. Four pitch walk to lead off the inning from Joey Hurth. And we'll bring up Cole Smith. It's really a hit by pitch by the, the leadoff hitter right there, Patrick uh, Closey. He, he got hit by a pitch and that's what opened the, I, get, I wouldn't say it opened the floodgates, it kind of cracked him. It's like when you're you're playing that, uh, that icebreaker game with the penguin in the middle. His hit by pitch kind of hit the first bit and got a little chunk out. And then the singles all knocked the penguin out of the game. But the pe knocking the penguin out was good in that sense. It wasn't losing the game like it is in the real game. One ball, no strikes to count. Runner goes, pitch misses low. Throw down to second is a pretty good throw, but just not in time. Closey is gonna steal second base. Got a good jump there. Joey Hurth will have to be aware of that. Bunt shown, that runs in and hits him. That got right on the fat part of the uh, shoulder for um, Cole Smith. Hit batsman, puts runners on first and second now with nobody out in the bottom half of the fourth. Two runs on four hits, no errors for Cincinnati. Nine runs on 11 hits, no errors for St. Louis. Josh Cross will go out and talk to his pitcher. Try to calm down Joey Hurth a little bit. Tyler Fogarty at the plate now. The hardest part about a game like this now is if you're the pitcher, it's like, you know, you can't fix anything. All you can do is leave it as is. Jordan Bischel will call time right after the meeting from Josh Cross. We do have a righty warming up down in the bullpen. I haven't seen a motion to it yet, but wouldn't be surprised if Cincinnati does go to. We're almost to a point in the ball game where you kind of need an innings eater. I don't think they are gonna go to the bullpen. They're just gonna talk about strategy here and pitch selection. They are going to go to the bullpen. So I always like it when the um, you know the manager will come out, talk to his pitcher as long as he can. Umpire will go walk to break up the visit, and then they're like, oh, now we're going to the uh, now we're going to the bullpen. So we'll take a quick break. When we come back. We'll tell you about the new pitcher. Bottom of the fourth here in St. Louis, nine two Billikens. Listening to Bearcat baseball.
Bottom half of the fourth inning. Pitching change here for the Bearcats. They'll be right-handed Michael Conti. Runners on first and second, nobody out. First pitch, a called strike to the left fielder. That is Tyler Fogarty. Conti, six foot three righty. From Cincinnati, went to Walnut Hills, but played at Central Michigan, came here with um, Jordan Bishop. That one will miss away. Sixth appearance for him. He's got four and two thirds innings prior. Five runs, three of which were earned. Seven strikeouts to three walks. You hope you can get a couple of innings out of him here. If he can get you through the sixth, you'd really be happy about that. Good breaking ball. Swung on and missed strike two. One ball, two strikes to count. Kind of a, a three-quarter arm slot. Not a full side, but I mean lower than even like a low arm slot. Like a low high arm slot. Which none of those words make sense in that order. But when you look at his arm slot, it makes sense in that order. Of the pitch fouled back. Yeah, you know, it's a it's a low arm slot, but not like a low low, but like not a high low arm slot, but like a like a low arm slot. You know, you, you get the gist. About shoulder shoulder height or so. Check to second, the one two again misses low. Does look like Fogarty's kind of trying to react real fast, like he that the arm slot's really messing with him. Set from Conti, check back to second. The 2-2, swung on, fly ball right center field, playable. Running back, still going to the wall, it was not playable, that's gone, a home run. That just kept carrying. Three run homer for Tyler Fogarty. That makes it 12 to two, Billikens. Third home run of the day now for St. Louis as a team. Yeah, that just kept going, kept going, kept going. I didn't think that had carry. I mean, like I said, I called it called it playable at first. Fifth home run of the season for Fogarty. 12-2. Nobody on, nobody out. Bottom of the four, 33 put up here. Called strikes and master. You know, you thought you did something good by uh, taking those two back in the top half of the inning and then you go and give them the two plus one right after. Breaking pitch, really good pitch right there. Finds the zone, no balls, two strikes. This is interesting is pitch shaping is a whole lot different because of that arm slot. It's kind of, it, it has an upward, almost an upward and then kind of a downward like a splitter sinker type mix when it gets over. You can really see the pitch shaping with it. Ball and two strikes. The wind up in the one two. That one misses away. It's funny, I sit here on a, you know, obviously a full audio radio broadcast is then do the pitch shape with my hand. Like it makes it any easier to understand what I'm saying about a pitch shaping as I'm marking it with my hand. A ground ball up the middle. That's gonna go into center field for a single. Astros second hit of the day, he's two for three. That's hit number 13 already on the day for the Billikens. Bearcats still yet to record an out here in the fourth. Game started as a pitcher's duel. It's been anything but since. First pitch to designate here, he'll show bunt. Poked and missed, strike one. Easton Richter, Rosemount, Minnesota. Didn't have to face off against Joey Hurst. There would've been two Minnesota guys going at him. Pitch misses up. Minnesota as the state, not as the Golden Gopher. One ball, one strike to count. We're in the bottom of the fourth. It's 12-2, St. Louis. They're setting the 1-1. One, one. Shot in the right field. That's going to drop. That might be extra bases. Running over to play. It's Landon Bitterick. It will be, too. Throw's going to come in. It's going to hit the lip of the turf. 
and it was right on line it looked like, but just where the bounce was was very unfortunate. It was an easy stand-up double for Easton Richter. I mean, you talk about hitting being contagious. It's about as contagious as COVID is right now. These bats. Twelve runs on fourteen hits now. We're back up. Or we're at Knox Preston in the lineup now. Runners on second and third. Nobody out. Popped up right side. Could be playable. Running in Landon Vitterick. Vitterick underneath it will make the grab. Tagging from third as the runner throw comes into the plate. Not in time. Sacrifice fly into foul territory for Knox Preston. Drives in another run. 13-3 St. Louis. Easton Richter advanced second to third on the uh, sacrifice fly as well. Corner infield in, runner on third, one out. They're gonna go to the plate. The runner goes on contact, now swung on, fouled back. Austin Newig at the plate. Newig homered his last time up. He had a pair of ABs last inning. Got a hit in both ABs. It's two for two. The 0 one swung on, fouled down the right side. No balls, two strikes. One went off the small part of the bat. Starting to cool down a little bit. Get a little windier now, too, with the uh, cloud cover fully overhead. The 0-2. Swung on, ground ball left side. Runner's not going to go on contact. Diving Carrington Cross across the first. Makes the play. Really good play from Carrington Cross. Had to lay out for that on what would be the cut of the grass. Was able to get up to his feet, make the throw across to first base. Hold that runner there at third as well. Out number two. Lineup will flip back up to the top. It'll be the first at bat for Brendan Stressler. Stressler came in after Hayden Moore was ejected. Ball fouled back. The 0 one swung on, grounded left side. Little chopper, Carrington Cross, that's off his body. He's not gonna be able to make the play. It's gonna be knee five. Bring in another run, make it 14 to two. Carrington Cross is pretty sure-handed there at third base, like we just saw him. Rare cough up. E5 continues the inning. Cincinnati has been one of the worst Friday teams in the country. <laughs> Your Friday record is not good. Feels like every Friday you just come out and kind of lay an egg, and then Saturday's okay. Swung on, fouled off. Both Big 12 series so far. First Big 12 series, you got no hit on Friday. Your second Big 12 series, you lost by 10 on Friday. And then you're still 500 in Big 12 play right now. <laughs> so the Fridays don't matter. Your only Friday win was March 1st against Northern Illinois. And you somewhat got to take that at face value because it is Northern Illinois. It was, an, it was a 13-5 win against Northern Illinois. Other than that, let's see, 0-2, 1-2, 1-3, 1-2, 1-3, 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, 1-2, 1-
going for it. Christian Mitchell, a little backside flip, and he's going to make the play for out number three. St. Louis adds five. We move on to the fifth, 14-2. Let's see Bearcat baseball. Top half of the fifth inning, 14-2. Millikens add on five in the fourth. Josh Hagman will lead off. Hagman will take a ball away. Bearcats did pull back two in the uh, last inning. Didn't mean anything once it got down to it. But they did do it. The 1-0. Finds the zone, called strike. Hagman one for two on the day. Single fly out. At this point, if you're Cincinnati, you're just trying to do what you can to at least somewhat, somewhat make it respectable. Just don't go, just don't lay over and go dead. Would be curious to see if it stays like this once you get around to that seventh inning, if they are going to, if they do go with that mercy rule or if they keep, keep the thing going. I, I personally would see no purpose in keeping it going. Little tap shot left side, and it's going to be gloved by the shortstop. There's a play by Austin Newig. And it's funny, those were the exact hits that were falling the entire time in the third inning. Cincinnati can't even get that to fall. Weak pop up, P6 for out number one. Tommy O'Connor will come up to the plate. Yeah, one and four on Fridays, five and one on Saturdays are the Bearcats. And your one loss on a Saturday was the back end of a doubleheader. So it wasn't even it wasn't even like you were playing a one off nine inning game and went and lost it. You're playing the back half of a doubleheader. Played two doubleheaders on Saturdays this season too. Pitch will miss away. Ball and no strike. 0 for two is Tommy. Fourteen runs on fourteen hits, no errors for St. Louis. That one misses away. Two runs on four hits with one error for Cincinnati. The wind up in the 2-0. Swung on. Off the end of the bat, that's going to go foul and just barely out of play. Two balls and a strike. That would be Cincinnati's luck here today, too, is that ball gets pulled back over there. <laughs> one gust of wind pulls the ball and leaves it in play. Able to make a grab on it or something. The wind up in 2 1. Check swung, he did not go. They're not even going to ask for an appeal. Three balls, one strike. Top of the lineup due up here for Cincinnati. One, two, three. The 3 1. Just misses away. That one didn't miss by much either. Tommy O'Connor will work himself a walk. Find his way to base for the first time today. Carrington will come up now. Carrington 
think Mark is 0 for 2. That marked as a ground at, in all technicalities, it was a sacrifice because any bunt that moves the base runner is a sacrifice. That's not a sacrifice. Fly ball left field going back is the left fielder. He's at the track at the wall looking up and it's gone, a home run. Carrington Cross, don't worry about the sacrifice. He's just gonna trot his way around the bases. Two run shot, 14-4, brings the Bearcats within 10. <laughs> that one just kept carrying and kept carrying. Caring for Carrington. Again, no uh, no elbow bump coming in the uh, in the uh, dugout. Time and score type deal. Third home run now for Cincinnati. All four runs have come across by via the homer. Josh Cross at the plate. Three, four, and five in the Cincinnati lineup have all homered. So, at least that's a at least that's something that's good. You know, your your power spots in the lineup are doing power things. Third home run for Carrington, though. The 0-1, that one will miss away. Catcher didn't present that well. Knox Preston. Honestly, there's a, I felt like there's a chance maybe you get a call on that, but. Preston kind of came across with it, almost like he was picking the ball rather than receiving it. The 1-1. One, one. Swung on, ground ball right side, right down the line. That's going to be gloved by the first baseman, Cole Smith. He's going to be able to take it himself. Three unassisted is out number two. That'll bring up Hunter Jesse. See, I said last inning, if you score two every inning the rest of the way, you'd win, but that was as long as you allowed zero the rest of the way, allowing five every way. Uh, allowing five in the last inning, it's, you're, you're not going to be able to get to that point. And uh, you'd only get to a 12, a 14 12 game at that point if you scored two every inning and kept them scoreless. Hunter Jesse homered his last time up last inning. This is his first home run as a Bearcat. Pitch misses low. Wind up in the 1-0, swung on, missed, tipped into the glove, strike two. Or strike one, excuse me. It's funny, you look at Hunter Jesse, and he, lo he looks like a ball player. I mean, you, you look at the kid, and you, you say, yeah, that, that dude would, he could go play outfield for me. It's really what, what, what you think when you look at Hunter Jesse. Ball misses away, two balls and one strike. And he started 43 ball games for Indiana last year. Played a good amount of baseball for Indiana over the last two years. The 2-1 finds the zone. Called strike. Did come somewhat back home from South Lebanon. Deuce is wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The 2-2. Two -two. Misses low and in. Three balls, two strikes. Nobody on two outs. Bearcats put up two here in the fifth. It's 14-4. Of your five hits, three of them have been home runs, too, for Cincinnati. At least that's something, somewhat of a bright spot. The 3-2, ground ball right side, diving and gloving at Ethan Sitzman. Sitzman to his feet across the first. What a play, Ethan Sitzman. He laid full extension out to glove that and stole a hit away from Hunter Jesse. Bearcats add two. We're at the midway point of this one, 14-4 St. Louis. You're listening to Bearcat Baseball.
Bottom half of the fifth inning, another new pitcher for Cincinnati. They're going to bring in Sean Parnell. He's going to really need to be an innings eater at this point. 14-4 the score. You got two more back, but because you gave up five last inning, the, the two doesn't really matter all that much, unfortunately. First pitch from Parnell is a called strike. Oh, well, and one pitch. Missed as well. One ball, one strike. Right fielder at the plate. Patrick closing. Long set from Parna. And the 1-1. One, one. Swung on and missed. High fastball. Strike number two. Parnell, redshirt freshman from Akron. Not his first appearance. He did have an appearance. He threw an inning ground ball right side. That's going to stay fair. Tommy's going to glove it but just knock it down. That's going to be an infield single to lead off the inning. Third time that uh, Closey's been on base. First time it's been from a hit. Seven and a thirds innings this season for Sean Parnell. Last appearance was against Kansas. Failed to record an out a uh, week ago today. Last Friday, gave up three runs in that one. Best outing was against Northern Illinois, two innings of uh, scoreless baseball back on March 2nd. Runner on first, nobody out. Bottom half of the fifth inning. Check to first, pitch misses up. Cole Smith at the plate. Cole Smith, two for two, paired singles, and then got hit by a pitch last inning. Pickoff attempt to first. Unwritten rule wise, you're uh, unwritten rule wise, you're you're not gonna you're not gonna run on this. The one zero ground ball up the middle, gloved by Sef six Sef six six four to six to three, not in time. Good play by Luke Sef six to at least get one out. Sefcik over to Christian Mitchell. Be a fielder's choice for the first out. Tyler Fogarty at the plate. Runner on first, one out. Pickoff attempt over to first. More of an acknowledgement pick than anything else with Cole Smith at first. Pick off over to first, still unsuccessful. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning, it's 14 to four. No changes defensively yet for Cincinnati. We'll see if they do wheel out a couple of changes with this game staying one-sided. Swing and a miss, breaking ball was not expected. It read at 88. It looked like a breaking ball with how far in front Fogarty was. I don't know if he just wasn't ready for it or what. Ground ball could end the inning here. Hang a zero. Cincinnati shifted a little over the left side. Runner goes. Easy play to second, not get the tag. Ooh, we called him out. He didn't get the tag down in time, but he'll take the caught stealing right there. <laughs> Luke Sefcik, the uh, receiver on that play. Be a caught stealing two to four. For out number two. The 0 2 misses up for a ball. Yeah, with how that uh, shift is, Sefcik was right behind second base, so all he had to do was just come forward to field the ball, but I didn't think he got the tag down in time. Hey. No, 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 vi no, no video stream at all for this game. So it's not like you're having a replay review. One hopper, it's going to go under the glove of Christian Mitchell into left field. Hard hit single there for Fogarty. Two out base hit. It's Fogarty's third hit. He's three for four with a homer. Fifteen hits on the day now for St. Louis. Fourteen runs on fifteen hits. I said earlier, hitting's contagious. 
And the Billikens have COVID right now when it comes to the bats. Bottom half of the fifth inning. Check to first. First pitch finds the zone. It's funny, I didn't think about it too when he ran. He said at the beginning of the inning, unwritten rule-wise, you're probably not trying to snatch a base here. <laughs> and they go do it and get thrown out. No balls, one strike to count. Pickoff attempt to first, unsuccessful. <laughs> you can tell too with the score, the the chirping and just kind of the, the random uh, the, the random comments from both dugouts that you normally hear uh, have gone way down. The set and uh, not the other one, another pickoff attempt. Called strike two there to Graham Mastros. Mastros, true freshman, he's from Chicago. Big kid, 6'4", 210. Mastros has started every game for the Billikens. All 19 prior, game 20 for him here. I do think it's interesting style-wise for St. Louis. You know, normally the city, it's ST, like the abbreviation is St. St. Louis University, runner goes, swung on, miss, strike three, doesn't even matter. Good inning for Sean Parnell. He's able to hang a zero for zero since the second. We move on to the sixth, 14-4. You're listening to Bearcat Baseball. Top half of the sixth inning. Pitching change for St. Louis. First one of the day for them. A good five innings from Jackson Holmes. He'll be the pitcher on record. He'll likely get his fifth win of the season here today. Luke Sefcik will face off against right-handed pitcher Owen Kelly. Sefcik will take a strike to open up his at-bat. Top half of the sixth, 14-4. The 0-1. Swung on, fouled back. No balls, two strikes. Good job by Sean Parnell to come in and get outs in that inning. Hang a zero. It's nice to finally see that. It is kind of like a, a breath of fresh air when you finally see that next zero up after a couple of crooked numbers. I mean, it's a nine and a five in consecutive innings. That one bounced. Ball and two strikes. So that's like one for one, single and a walk. 
He's been stranded on second each time he's made it to base. Came up in the second and the fourth, now here in the sixth. So very symmetrical ABs so far. The one, two. Misses away. Two balls, two strikes. So uh, St. Louis program was a good amount of recent history. And it did win that six line shot right at Ethan Sitzman at second base. All he really had to do was kind of go down to a knee to make the play. Hard line out to second for out number one. But they won six um, conference championships in the 2010s. Only won the uh, A-10 tournament three times. And made the, only made the NCAAs three times at least. We have a couple All-Americans as well. I was saying last inning, it's funny with the uh, the difference in the style of the school versus the city. The city is usually always, the Saint is abbreviated. It's ST period and then Lewis. The ball misses Landon Bitterick at the plate. But the, the Billikens, it's always, you, you spell it out. It's St. Louis, S-A-I-N-T and then Lewis. But I've never seen, I, I'd assume that I haven't read the, surprisingly enough, haven't read the St. Louis University style guide. But... I would assume that that is very clearly written out in their style guide because I've never once seen them referred to as St. Louis with an abbreviated Saint. The 2-0. -oh. This is low. Set the three out and landed. That one will miss away, ball four. Landon Vitterick walks. St. Louis, the Billikens. I was saying earlier, you know, we have to save that Billiken story. We gotta figure out, we, we gotta save why a Billiken is a Billiken. And, you know, with a 10 run ball game, I think it's a good time to drop that in there, <laughs> make it interesting. But it's, uh, they say it's a, it's a mythical good luck figure who represents things as they ought to be. So it's not even a real, it's not even a real thing. I mean, I guess it's probably, it's more real than a UCF's national championship, but that one will miss up and in to Christian Mitchell. Billiken, uh, no, no one can say for sure when Billiken was first St. Louis's mascot and linked to him, but they, uh, <laughs> they're saying that but Billiken is tied possibly. A little chip shot left field going back left fielder Tyler Fogarty. He's at the wall and that's gone a home run. Christian Mitchell, another home run and you are hanging twos right now but you need a few more. Two run home run, Christian Mitchell. That makes it 14-6 now, Cincinnati. All your runs have come from the long ball for the Bearcats so far today. That home run for Christian Mitchell. That one is his first as a Bearcat. So a couple of Bearcat firsts today. Christian Mitchell, Hunter Jesse. But they're saying that the Billiken likely um, ties back to S uh, St. Louis's football coach in 1910 and that he resembled the Billiken, the kind of goofy looking smiley Billiken logo. Bunt shown Dalton Pierce and he's gonna pull back. It's gonna be a called strike anyways. They called the football team Bender's Billikens because there was a cartoonist that drew a caricature of the coach in the form of a Billiken. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Big swing and a miss for strike number two, Dalton Pearson. It's funny. It's uh, one of those names that is, it does kind of have like more lore to it where Cincinnati, it's like, you know, the, a Bearcat, the 0-2 misses low, one ball, two strikes. Bearcat, first off, is an actual, like, thing. Like, it's, it's an animal. But also, there's a very clear story behind the Bearcats. And uh, the football team back in, what was it, 1920s, 1930s. And they're, um, they were playing Kentucky in a game. And they said they, uh, the, Kentucky's a Wildcat since they, they they're there's some bear cats and kind of stuck in that sense in a very abridged simplified version of the story but you know it, it is interesting to see some of these mascots that like 
if someone comes up in 2024 and tried to create this brand, that one finds the bottom half. That was that was iffy, but it'll be a called strike three. Dalton Pearson will go down looking. But if the Billiken did not exist and someone walks uh, into a, a promotions meeting, whatever, in 2024, and pitches this exact brand, like this exact brand. Hey, we're gonna be the Billikins. We're gonna have this. This is what a Billikin is. People are gonna look at them like they're crazy. But because it has this lore from the early 1900s, a bill. I mean, it's 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 a Billikin. They're they're the Billikins. <laughs> that's just that's just how it is. We flip back up to the top of the line of Josh Hagman will take a strike. That's one of those things with uh, college sports that you don't really see anywhere else. Like. Why is uh, Michigan the Wolverines when there's no Wolverines lo uh, native to Michigan? I mean, who knows? Pitch misses low and away. Yeah, so, so, you know, some college traditions don't make sense. Why, why is Ohio State the Buckeyes and then they put, like, actual marijuana leaves on their helmets? And that doesn't make sense either. A lot of that stuff where you're scratching your head a bit, that's for sure. But that's, that's the fun of it sit here and talk about interesting traditions and names and whatnot all day long. Fouled back, fallen two strikes. <laughs> it's funny that uh, they have a, a radar gun that's underneath the netting here. And the radar gun picks up the pitch, but then like right there when the ball was fouled straight back, it picked up the ball too. So it had like this real dramatic kind of curve that pitch will miss outside where it went from like 85 up to 99, back down to like 70 as the ball came off the bat, hit the net, and all the momentum was killed. <laughs> Deuce is wild, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Top half of the six, the Bearcats have scored two, the two, two. That one misses away, three balls, two strikes. Eggman one for three, singled the lead off the ball game in the first. Play tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Central here in St. Louis. And then round it up with the Sunday ball game, which is 1 o'clock here. 2 o'clock back home in Cincinnati. Three balls, two strikes to count. Nobody on, so the carousel won't spin. Tommy O'Connor on deck, should it get to him. The set from Owen Kelly, the 3-2, misses up and away, ball four. Josh Hageman will work himself a walk. Brings up Tommy O'Connor. See, the thing is, if if Tommy can put one out here, I mean, it's still an interesting ball game. You start to tack on more. It's just it's the two runs each inning isn't going to work with what your deficit is right now. If you didn't give up the five in the fourth, also, it would have been turned around to be a real interesting game right now. The set from Owen Kelly. First pitch to Tommy. That one finds the zone. No balls, one strike to count. The set and the 0-1. Breaking pitch. Broke too much. Ball and strike. Doesn't have a ton of check to first. I feel like Hageman could get a decent jump. One ball, one strike to count. The one, one. Swung on, fly ball right field, and that's gone, a home run. I said Tommy puts one out, it can be interesting. Tommy put one out right there. Long gone for a home run. Four runs this inning, Tommy's fifth of the season. It's 14 to eight. Hey, don't count out the Bearcats just yet. Still, all runs off the home run. All runs off the home run, eight of them now. It's been all two run homers. You've had four two run homers to get yourself eight runs. I said this team scores eight runs a game. You got your eight, but you're gonna need another seven of them here to try to win this thing. Carrington Cross will be at the plate. 
Cross will be the seventh Bearcat to hit. They do have the big hat that they've used a couple times today now with four home runs. They have one of those really goofy looking big hats with the old school Bearcat logo on the front of it. There was an offensive timeout that got adjourned straight to a defensive timeout. You want to talk about pace of play, something like that is what you can stop. It's always my, my one gripe, my one gripe when pace of play comes up are those offensive timeouts in college baseball. That's not a thing that needs to happen at all. <laughs> you don't need that. And now they're uh, talking to talking to the pitcher. They do have a righty warming up. Looks like it's likely. I think that was uh, Logan Gegas. Looks like a 27 on his bat. Can't fully tell. They are going to motion for him. That's going to be the end of the day for Owen Kelly. He's not going to make it out of the sixth inning, giving up four runs here in the sixth. So we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll tell you about the new pitcher. Go see the Bearcat Baseball. Top half of the sixth inning, 14-8 St. Louis. New pitcher for the Billikins. It's right-handed Jack Weber. Weber, six foot four, junior. He's from here. Pitch finds the dirt. Carrington cross. They're gonna appeal to first. Did not go. They're at a point in this ball game where it can go one of two different ways. You can really kind of embrace trying to come back in this thing, or it's yeah, you know, we did enough to at least not feel terrible about ourselves today. And that's that's kind of what we're trying to, uh, these next at bat or two that you're really going to figure out. Two outs here, nobody on. Bearcats have put up four this inning. The 1-1. One, one. 
That one bounces. Two balls and a strike. Carrington homered his last time up last inning. Can't homer this time because there's nobody on base. Bearcats can only hit two run homers today. They're not allowed to hit solo shots. It's almost like they thought they were playing with uh, like beer league softball rules. A little tapper to the right side kind of handcuffed him inside out. It's going to go straight to the first baseman, Cole Smith, and he's going to make the play on his own for out number three. Three unassisted is the third out of the sixth inning. We go to the bottom half of the Bottom half of the sixth, Bearcats put up four by a pair of home runs. 14-8 St. Louis, you'll see in the Bearcat baseball. Bottom half of the sixth inning. 14-8 the score. Swung on, skied, foul. There's my opportunity right there for the foul ball. I was as close as I was gonna get. I was saying it earlier in the game. You know, it had to be a perfectly like placed one. It would have been over to the right a little bit, but I mean, it almost got up over the top. <laughs> Pitching change for the Bearcats. Couple of moves. Christian Mitchell will come in to pitch from shortstop. Cam Goodry goes to shortstop. Josh Hegeman will go to center. Dalton Pearson's out of the game. And Hunter Jesse will go from DH into left field. Bunt shown, bunt pulled back, ball away. Two balls, one strike. So now defensively for Cincinnati, left to right in the outfield, it's Hunter Jesse, Josh Hegeman, Landon Vitterick. In the infield, it is Carrington Cross, Cam Goodry, Luke Sefcik, Tommy O'Connor, but right now they're extreme shifted. Actually, I think Goodry might be at third base, unless the shift just pulled him over. Called strike there. Three balls, two strikes to count now to Richter. Easton Richter, two for three, single and a double for him. The three, two, swung on, popped up left side, running over his Hegeman. Hegeman under it, he will make the grab for out number one. Easy first out there for Cincinnati. Okay, so it was just the shift. Carrington went back over to a normal third base position. Bottom of the sixth, 14-8. St. Louis, Cincinnati scored six unanswered here. That's 14-2. Called strike. Knox Preston at the plate. 
there's a decent amount of Cincinnati contingency here. I mean, obviously, pretty much all parents and then me, but pretty decent contingency. See a good amount of sweet balls. The 2-0. For all the for all the places that you would go to for uh, non-conference series, I feel like St. Louis is a cool place just because of the city and being able to see all that stuff too. Kind of like when we went to Pittsburgh for football in the fall. It's called strike there, two balls, two strikes. You get to see the city itself instead of just, you know, going to some random uh, middle of nowhere college town. The 2-2 swung on fly ball right field. Running over is Landon Vitterick. He'll be under it. He will make the grab on the run for out number two. Two quick outs for Christian Mitchell and the Bears now. So the only player removed from the game for Cincinnati was Dalton Pearson. Dalton Pearson was the one who had to be sacrificed to remove the DH. Swung on, fouled back. No balls, one strike to count. Newick, two for three, homered. The wind up in the 0-1. Popped up, right side, way up the elevator shaft. That looks playable. Tommy O'Connor under it in foul territory, and he'll make the grab for out number three. Really quick, one, two, three, sixth for Christian Mitchell. We move on to inning number seven, 14-8, St. Louis. Real Santa Bear Cat Baseball. Top half of the seventh, top half of the seventh here in St. Louis. Bearcats trail 14-8. Another quick inning. Christian Mitchell hung a one, two, three, sixth. So it's going to be Josh Cross leading off for the Bearcats. Josh Cross, Hunter, Jesse, Luke Sefson. They're going to face off against Jack Weber. Fly ball, deep right field, and gone a home run. <laughs> Josh Cross, no doubter. Second bomb of the day. And Again, you're still pulling back, pulling back, pulling back. That's five bombs on the day now. It's only a five-run ball game. <laughs> this was a 14-2 game at one point. Wow. That one was, I didn't even, I didn't see that pitch thrown, and I did not see that ball where it went. I just looked at the reaction of the outfielders, and no shot. First non-two-run homer of the day, also for Cincinnati. Fifth home run of the day total. Hey, you might... I, I think next home run, you're going to see the elbow bump. The, the, the deficit is close enough. Uh, the lead is small enough now for it. Called strike Hunter Jesse. Two home runs now today for Josh Cross. His sixth and seventh on the season. That's seven unanswered now for Cincinnati since being down 14-2. 
ball bounces. Ball and a strike. We'll have to see. The pull up today's game, guys. Let's see if there's anything about comeback numbers. The 1 1 misses away. So you were down as much as 12 in this ball game, and you're at least somewhat sniffing it now. Two to one, misses low. That Bearcat dugout now has a whole lot more energy. I mean, you can tell that they are, they're a whole lot more into this game now than they were even two innings ago. That's for sure. Three and one the count. The set, the three one pitch, swung on and missed. Pretty good swing there from Hunter Jesse. Three balls, two strikes. Set the 3 2. Swung on and missed strike three. Big strikeout right there from Jack Weber. Was able to work himself back into the count versus Hunter Jesse and sit him down swinging. Out number one. Luke Sefcik will come to the plate now. Called strike to Sefcik. Leading off the inning. Leading off his at bat here. 14 9 the score now. Top of the seven. Bearcats seven unanswered here. No balls, one strike to count to him. The 0 1. Swung on, fly ball center field. That's playable. Going back, Brandon Stressler. Stressler's still going back. That's over his head, and that's going to drop at the wall. That could be three for Sepsik. He's going to hold up at second. That's a smart play. You don't need to try to stretch it right there, but that ball, I, that, that ball's probably out at home. At home, I, I mean, I, I think in Cincinnati, that's a home run with the little bit shorter fences, but a double for Sefcik puts a runner in scoring position for Lane and Vitterick. It's the first time the Bearcats have hit five home runs since a blowout at Xavier last year where there were two grand slams in that ball game. This pitch misses low. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, that's only four home runs that they hit in that game. The last, th this one was a Xavier game from 2021 was the last time they hit five home runs. And that home run to start this inning was the fifth for Cincinnati, the 1-0. That one will find the zone. One ball, one strike to count. Runner on second, one man out. Swung on, fly ball right field, and that one's gone, a home run. Landon Vitterick. Wow, his second of the day. It's a three run ball game. <laughs> This ball is flying. <laughs> it didn't look like it was, we're talking about, we're, we're talking about a mercy rule at one point in this game. And now another two home run inning. 14 to 11 the score. Six home runs in this ball game for Cincinnati. And you are right back in this game. All of these home runs too, I mean, other than, I think mean, Christian Mitchell's was a little bit of a wall scraper, but other than Christian Mitchell's home run, all of these have been like no doubter home runs. Mitchell will show bunt, pull back, and be called strike anyways. Three runs now here in the top of the seventh for Cincinnati, it's 14-11. That one will miss away. No balls, one strike, or one ball, one strike to count now after that miss. Cincinnati's dugout all up on the on the uh, wall now. The 1-1, one, one, that one will miss low. Two balls and a strike. Nothing on here about uh, comeback numbers, about like last time they came back, anything along those lines. The 2-1, swung on, chip shot right side. I think that might drop running for it is Patrick Closey. And he, will be able to run under it and make the grab. Sat up just a little too long. You fly out to right for out number two. 
Dalton Pearson will come to the plate. Or actually, it'll be Cam Goodger. Dalton Pearson got removed out of the ball game defensively last game. First pitch to Goodger, he's called strike. Goodry, 250 average, six for 24. Does have five home runs on the season. And with how the ball's been flying, she gets a piece of one. Maybe, maybe. 14 to 11 the score. Nobody on two outs, stop the seven. No balls, two strikes to count. The 0-2, that one got him, strike three. That one found the zone. Bearcats bring three back, a pair of home runs. Josh Cross and Landon Vitterick, their second of the day each. We're at stretch time here in St. Louis. Three run ball game, it's 14 to 11. You'll see the Bearcat baseball. Bottom half of the seventh inning. Cincinnati <laughs> clawing and fighting its way back in this ball game. 14 to 11 now. Three more runs in the top half of the seventh inning. Christian Mitchell on for another inning of work. Had a one, two, three, uh, sixth. See what he can do here in the seventh. First pitch called strike. Top of the lineup, Brendan Stressler at the plate. Stressler came in after the ejection to Hayden Moore. Pitch left down low. Yeah, I mean, this is a game that Cincinnati at one point had no business even sniffing a chance in. I mean, you were down a lot. Check swung on. They did not go, did not go to an appeal. Two balls, two, two balls and a strike to count. And now you're looking at Nine unanswered to make it 14 to 11. Swung on and missed, strike two. Big swing on that one. Stressler reached on error, his only plate appearance. The 2-2, two -two. outside corner almost. Three balls, two strikes. The wind up in the 3-2, swung on one hopper. Tommy gloves it in the air for a line out for out number one. Line shot right at Tommy O'Connor. Just gets it done himself. L3 for out number one. It's gonna bring up Ethan Sitzman. It's kind of a weird spot for that. Tommy had to get all the way down. It almost looked like he was gonna trap it instead of catch it, which Christian Mitchell was gonna be there for the PFP anyways. But. Ethan Sitzman at the plate. First pitch, called strike. Not, not a no catch, no call right there because Josh Cross couldn't handle it behind the plate. He should have fumbled it. That one high pitch. It's going to fly ball into left field. Playable. Underneath it, Hunter Jesse is going to make the grab for out number two. It was a high fastball there that Sitzman went kind of chasing. I think he thought if he gets the elevation, he's going to be able to get it out of there, and it just was not at all the case. Just kind of got his wrists up on it. Nobody on two outs. Right fielder at the plate. Patrick closing. Getting a 
bit of wind now. Breaking ball, swung right through it. Strike number one. Closey, one for two, but he's reached base three times. Walked, hit by a pitch, singled his last time up. Breaking ball, went back to the well, got water again. No balls, two strikes. The wind up from Mitchell and the 0-2. Outside corner just missed. We're trying to play with him a little bit, see if maybe he could get an offer on that just outside. Ball and two strikes to count now. Nobody on two outs. Bottom half of the seventh inning, 14 to 11. The one, two, swung on. Fly ball right field, playable. Coming in Landon Vitterick. He's underneath it, and he'll make the grab for out number three. Another one, two, three inning for Christian Mitchell and the Bearcats. We're on to the eighth. Three-run ball game, 14 to 11. You'll we'll see the Bearcat baseball. Top out of the eighth inning, 14 to 11, Cincinnati trails. Top of the lineup due up for the Bearcats. And a face off against Jack Weatherston. That pitch will find the zone. Called strike one, Josh Hegeman due up. Hegeman O'Connor cross, one, two, three. It's exactly where you want to be in this lineup to try to get yourself back at completely into this ball game. You're only down three. I mean, if your lead all, your two, your first two guys get on, Carrington could have a chance to go yard to take to uh, tie this ball game up. Breaking pitch, really good, finds the zone, strike two. Now, nine unanswered now. 14 to two ball game, that's now a 14 to 11 ball game. The set in the 0-2. Swung on, ground ball right side. It's gonna be played by the first baseman, Cole Smith. Thought it was gonna eat him up a little bit, but he was able to corral it. Was able to take it himself for the three unassisted. Tommy O'Connor will come to the plate. He homered his last time up. Back in the sixth. That home run was one of one of now six home runs in this ballgame for the Bearcats. It was his fifth of the year. First pitch to him. This finds the upper half. It's right at the letters. One for three day for Tommy. That home run, kind of an emphasis on everything. Two run shot back in the sixth. Swung on off the end of the bat. That's gonna get gloved by the shortstop, spinning around, making the play over to first. Austin Newig was shifted over and was able to make a play on that. <clears throat> Went right off the end of Tommy's bat. I, th I thought maybe that was gonna be able to get through. I think that was, that was a six to three, even though he hit it to the right side of the field. Nobody on two outs, Carrington cross at the plate. You're almost worried, you know, Cincinnati saw that one zero and they were able to keep hanging zeros. You don't want St. Louis to see a zero and it looks like there's a good shot at that. Fly ball right field, Patrick closely coming in. He'll be under it and make the grab for out number three. Bearcats go down in order for the first time since the third. We're on to the bottom half of the eighth, 14 to 11. St. Louis, you're listening to Bearcat Baseball.
Bottom half of the ninth inning, or bottom half of the eighth inning, excuse me. Christian Mitchell still out on the mound. First zero hung offensively for the Bearcats since the third. With the zero in the eighth. So still a three run ball game. Christian Mitchell will come out for another inning of work. Base four, five, six. First pitch, pitch, strike number one. If you're Christian Mitchell, you've done your job perfectly so far. Keep it going. The 01. Swung on. Fly ball right center field. Running for it is Hageman. It's not going to be able to get to it. It's going to bounce one hop off the wall. Standing up at second with a double is Cole Smith. That's the first base runner on Christian Mitchell and is now two plus innings of work. Retired the first six he saw. The first base runner. 17th hit now for St. Louis today. A lot of crooked numbers up on that board after Cincinnati started to kind of ignite its offense. 11 runs on 10 hits with one error for the Bearcats. 14 runs on 17 hits with no errors for the Billikens. And that one error did allow a run for uh, that C Cincinnati did allow a run off that error, which didn't think much of it when it was a 12 run ball game. Ground ball left side is going to be scooped up by Cam Goodry. Goodry's throw across the first is in time for out number one. You didn't think much of that that extra run from the error back in the fourth inning. But all of a sudden now it's a three run ball game and you're thinking a whole lot about that, that one run off the air if that becomes the difference in the game. Run on second one out, 14 to 11. Good score. First of three this weekend here in St. Louis. Swung on, step foul right back to the screen. Graham Mastros at the plate. Bearcats 13 and nine coming into today. Called strike. No balls. And two strikes to count. St. Louis 15 and four coming into today. The 0-2 misses low for a ball. Gets back to the screen. Josh Cross is gonna have to run back to get it. Pass ball is going to move that runner only 90 feet away from scoring now. That's actually a big run in this ball game now. Wouldn't think a run in the eighth would be a very big run back in a 12 run ball game. Three run ball. The one, two. Outside corner. I, ooh, that just must have missed off the plate. That was tight right there. That's exactly where you want that pitch if you were Christian Mitchell. Two balls, two strikes to count. The two, two. That one got him strike three. I do think that pitch was a little less of a strike than the one before it. But nonetheless, strikeout looking out number two. That's only the second strikeout for the Bearcats as a pitching staff today. Not many strikeouts at all. Bring up Easton Richter. Runner on third, two outs. You're not worried about that runner as much anymore now. You just get this guy out. First pitch misses low for a ball. The 1 0. Swung on, shot into right field, running forwards. Landon Vitterick, and he will make the grab about belt high for out number three. St. Louis puts a runner on third, but leaves him there. Last call time for the Bearcats, they need three. Listening to Bearcat Baseball.
Top half of the ninth inning, last call time for Cincinnati. Need three to keep this thing going, four to take the lead. It's gonna be four, five, and six due up in the lineup. Josh Cross will take a called strike. Cross is homered twice today. Still facing off against the right-handed Jack Weber. He is a righty in the bullpen getting ready. Stepped off. They're calling a, they called somewhat of like a pitch clock violation? You know, there's not a pitch clock here? That's what I would have made that out to be. There was something right there. Jordan Bishop was not happy about whatever it was. There was no motion that it's now like 0-2 or anything, but a set in the 01, swung on, fly ball right field. If that stays fair, that can be three, and it does. Home run, Josh Cross, his third. Hits a two-run ball game. It doesn't matter whatever that ump was saying to him right there. Just go yard again. <laughs> Josh Cross, a three-home run day. And now a two-run ball game. And that's the way you want to start this in and get things going for Cincinnati. Fourteen twelve now. That one skied right side. Backpedaling's Ethan Sitzman. Sitzman gives way to Austin Newing, and he just gets under it to make the play for out number one. Almost looked like he wasn't going to be able to play. It's Sun or something was going to get in his way. It's the first Bearcats hit three home runs in a game since J.P. Sponseller did it. A doubleheader against Northwestern back in 2022. That third home run right there. Luke Sefcik takes a called strike. 14-12. Bearcats need two to keep this thing going. Try to complete this comeback somewhat. Down by 12 at one point. The one bounces, one ball, one strike. Hey, now you're you're a base runner away from your tying run being at the plate. So I mean, there's not much else you can ask for right now if you're Cincinnati. The one one, this is up, ball two. Smart abs right here, smart abs. Sevcik two for three on the day, single double line out, walked back in the second as well. Long set to two one. Swung on and missed. Handcuffed him. Strike two. Look, he was waiting, waiting, waiting. He recognized the pitch, but then still just kind of swung through it. Two balls, two strikes to count now. The two two. Swung on. Skied right side. Patrick Klosky comes in a couple steps. He'll be under it and make the grab for out number two. Cincinnati down to its final out. be Landon Vitterick up to the plate who has two home runs on the day of his own. Has one home run. He does not have two. He has one home run. To the plate. Could get a second. A second would not be bad here at all. First pitch to him. Misses up. Just do what you can to get on base. Down to your final out. Playing, playing with house money here as well. Now 10 unanswered runs for Cincinnati. The 1-0. -oh. Outside. Outside for a ball. I thought it was going to hit the outside corner, truly. But just a little too much away. The set, the 2-0. -oh. Foul back up over the screen. Two balls and a strike. Wind starting to pick up here. Blowing kind of out towards right center, which does benefit Landon Vitterick as a left-handed hitter. The 2-1, that finds the zone, called strike two. Cincinnati down to its final strike now. 
Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Two run ball game. Top half of the ninth inning. The 2-2. Two -two. Got him, strike three. Vitterick didn't like that. He'll go down looking and the comeback effort falls just short for Cincinnati. 10 unanswered and usually 10 unanswered is gonna be enough to get you something. Today, 10 unanswered is just enough to get you a two run loss. 14-12 the final score. Josh Cross, three home runs in this ball game. What a day from that kid. Seven total home runs from Cincinnati. Gotta count that up again just to make sure we're right on that number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight home runs for Cincinnati. Of the, of the 12 runs, every single run came off of a home run. Yes, every single one of the 12 did. So you fall in your first one and it's, it's a disappointing result, but it's a result that you're at least not leaving with anywhere as near of sour of a taste in your mouth as you would have in that inning when you're down 14 to two. So we'll be back on air tomorrow. It'll be a uh, three o'clock Eastern time start. So we'll be on air about 2.50 for that one. So that'll just about do it from here in St. Louis. Once again, Preston Baker saying so long. Final score, Bearcats fall 14 to 12. We'll talk to you tomorrow.